All right. So now we're getting into how to make repeating patterns in Photoshop. And we're not doing photorealistic patterns. We're doing color reduced patterns. I went over the color reduction in the last video, so check that one out. And now we are going to use those motifs I made, motifs that I made. Um, and we are going to um, adapt these into repeating patterns. And I'm going to start off really simple. Um, so first off, I've reduced these colors so I can choose the magic wand tool and um, select all of the white at once instantly. Even if this were on zero tolerance, the magic wand tool, it should be able to pick up all of the white. Um, and I'm going to hit delete. So now we just have the blue, which means we'd be able to change our background color independently and um, move our motifs around more independently too. And it's actually what would be good practice is I'm just selecting around this with the polygonal, polygonal lasso tool. And um, I, uh, I'm i going to hit copy, edit copy. And um, when we go to file new, we will have an option called clipboard. We're gonna hit create. And this is going to make a clipboard for me that's the size of my um, of my object. And I'm going to delete the background square. Um, so it would be good practice to save all of your motifs as little separate files, right? So I'm going to um, save it as a um, as a Photoshop file. That's that's fine. Um, also saving it as a PNG might be might be good, which would preserve the transparent background. Um, but saving it as a Photoshop file works for now. Motif one. And I would just do that for all the motifs. Motif one, motif two, motif three. Um, so I'm gonna pause for a second while I do that. Okay, so I've made all of these into their own files with transparent backgrounds and I've saved them all as Photoshop files. And I'm actually going to close them all now and start a new file. So I'll even close this one. And remember, we need to know what size we are working at when we're doing an Illustrator file, sorry, a Photoshop file we need to work at the specific size that the file is going to be. So at MassArt in the Floral Project, we have to produce textile designs that are at 12 inches and 24 inches. That's one of the requirements is that the like tile that you make is one of those sizes. So I'm going to make a 12 inch tile right now and it just has to be 12 inches in one of the dimensions. Technically, I think it should be the like up and down dimension, but if it's the side to side dimension, I'm not going to really quibble as long as you kind of have a small, medium, and large tile um, for the floral project, if that makes sense. But uh, so going back, we are going to create new, and we know that we need it to be 12 inches. Um, so we're going to change the units to inches and um, Let's make the height uh, 12, right? And the width can be anything. So we'll keep it kind of thin. We'll keep the width at uh, 6. And I'll choose Create. And now I'm going to, I'm just going to make a straight repeat to start off with. Um, and then we'll talk about how you can make um, half drops and other things in a bit, but um, we're just going to make a really simple straight repeat. Um, but I am going to to find those illustrations. And um, we are going to drop all of the motifs into here. And we can hit enter on all of them. This is at 300 pixels per inch, so um, we can uh, happily 
happily bring these in and they will be um, a good size and this is the resolution that I drew them at. So um, let's shut off some of the extra layers right now and we'll just start getting them in place. Um, and what's great about this technique is that like they're linked to the Photoshop file so if you if you needed to change something um, at this point you could still um, click on the Photoshop file and um, you could sorry you could double click on the motif and what would happen is it opens up in this is the Photoshop file automatically opens up so you could change something in here and then it would fix your motif forever once you hit save here um, so we will actually let's add eyes to this guy really quick just to show you so back here this guy eyes very hard to see um, so we're going to grab the pencil tool. Remember, we use the pencil tool because it um, keeps hard edges. It doesn't try to add anything. And I'm just going to use my um, Wacom brush to fill this in. And then we're going to go to File, Save. And it won't update until you save. But we can close this now. And back here, it has eyes instantaneously. And the motif, your file, is permanently fixed. Um, so that's the benefit of doing motifs that way. Um, in order to change the color, I do think we're going to have to rasterize these, remember? So these are all linked to their files. If we wanted to be able to change the color on them or like erase them or change things on this file, we would have to choose right-click, rasterize layers. And then they wouldn't be linked anymore. Um, but another thing that's great is if you chose to have more than one of the motifs, right? Like, let's say we also wanted a dog um, here that's bowing in the other direction. We can just do edit, transform, reflect, or flip. Yeah. Um, we don't want anyone touching the edges right now. That's important. Um, we could change both of these dogs at the same time. Um, so if you're using something with a lot of the same motif and you're not 100% sure about it yet, um, you could do something like this. So let's just add, um, I don't know, a spot on its butt. Something like that. We can choose File, Save. And now both of the dogs should have it. I guess this one doesn't because it's, um, because it was flipped. Not the end of the world. Um, so keep those techniques in mind. Once we have a layout that we like, I'm going to give them a little bit more space. Let's talk about just defining a pattern really quick. Um, and then we'll talk about um, choosing other, uh, making it more seamless. Okay, because right now this pattern would be pretty kind of blocky and gridded probably um, because the dogs are like um, so evenly spaced and that's, nothing is overlapping the edge of the tile. Um, so we are going to go to um, five, burp, burp, burp. we're going to go to edit, define pattern, excuse me. And um, once we do this, this, this option comes up and we'll name this Olive One because that's my dog's name. Um, that adds it to Photoshop's patterns panel. Okay, so here's all of one in here. And the patterns panel is something that's only been added in like this last generation of Illustrator. Um, so it's something that um, a lot of my techniques at least still don't use this pattern a ton, or this panel a ton. But there it is, all of one. And if we change this into large thumbnails, we can see that pattern. Um, oh, and I accidentally made that a pattern with this earlier. So we are going to go, um, now we're going to make our own, a new file. And this is going to be like, 
your 11 by 17 portfolio page, okay? And we're going to fill this portfolio page with your pattern. Um, so we can go to edit, fill, and right now I'm going to uncheck script. And we're going to choose the correct pattern. I had to double click on it and we will hit okay. And there's the pattern. So um, there's some negatives about applying a pattern this way by going to edit fill. And then you have to make sure that the content is on pattern. And then you can choose the pattern. The positive of this way is that we can choose to make a script um, or we can choose to um, do a brick fill. If we choose that, then this other panel pops up. Give it a second. It's thinking. Um, and in here you can change some things, um, which I wouldn't recommend you always changing, uh, but um, this does allow you to do a brick fill, which Photoshop in past versions hasn't really allowed you to do. Um, and so we do want to be offset between the rows 50% um, and we can hit um, okay, but actually, oh, we can scale the pattern in here as well. Um, is that, or will that just change this? All right, let's try it. Um, and we can hit okay, and this will do a half drop. Oh, and it did scale the pattern as well. So I was under the impression that you wouldn't be able to scale the pattern using that feature, but you can, um, so it's perfect. So that's probably the best way to do it, actually. Um, if we want to um, do like a half drop or whatever, we, um, we can that way. Edit, fill, content aware fill, um, or sorry, edit fill pattern. Contents is pattern. And then you choose the correct pattern and if you want it to be a brick, you can choose brick fill. Or if you just want it to be small, you can choose um, a uh, brick fill as well. And in this panel, we can then um, we can scale it down. Um, but we could choose the offset between the rows to be zero, um, and we could change the scale um, to be, what, 0.25 or whatever you want. Um, and you can hit OK. So let's talk about how to make this into a more seamless repeat. Um, even though I did a pretty good job of getting things like as close to the edge as possible, there's still like, I can definitely see a row here, a line up here, right? Um, and I can kind of see the line up here where um, there's like a gap in the pattern. So um, we are going to try to fix that. So we're going to go back here. And if we're just making a straight repeat, which we will start off with, this is um, pretty straightforward. You just have to know the size of your um, image. So if we go to image, image size. We want to change this to pixels and write down the amount of pixels. Um, and it's, it, it's uh, not, it's not vital. Like you can do this without doing any math. Um, you can just kind of like guesstimate where the middle will be. Um, but we're basically going to divide these numbers in half. So that's, that's pretty straightforward here. It's, um, 900 pixels and 1800 pixels. Um, so now we are going to use filter other offsets. 
And what this does is it's, let's set it to zero first off. I'm gonna set these both to zero. Um, oh, and we have to, we have to merge all the layers before we do that. Um, or at least that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, so you kind of have to be pretty confident about the layout of your pattern already. Um, so we will choose merge. And we are going to go to filter, other, offset. I've still left my background out of this, um, and it's just the transparent blue layers. Um, so what this does is it slides the image over, right? So if I start moving this incrementally, we can see the image slide to the right and roll around to the left. It's very important that wrap around is checked. If any of these other options are checked for undefined area, it um, won't wrap it around in the same way. Okay, so wrap it around. And um, let's make both of these zero. What we're going to do is we're going to type in half of the width and the height into here. And that is going to put the center of the illustration um, in the center. And actually, let me explain this even further by including some markings, right? Um, if we grab the pencil tool and we're just going to put little squares in the corner, um, these are going to end up in the center of our page and they're going to make a little cross, okay? So let's try it out. Filter, other, offsets. And we'll type in 900 in the horizontal and um, 3600 in the vertical, or sorry, 1800. That's the full height. There we go. And so that's the center. And this is our, these are our lineups or our alleyways, these like empty spaces in between the dogs. Um, so I'm going to erase those those blue marks, but hopefully that helped you visualize what was happening. Um, I'm actually going to hit undo and do that with the selection tool. I just feel like I accidentally added in some um, in between colors of blue by using like a soft brush for my eraser. Um, and this would never because it was, well, anti-aliasing was checked, but it wasn't going through any solid parts, so it wouldn't have added any anti-aliasing. Um, all right, let's uh, add a couple more dogs in here. Um, let's try this one, and what we can do is we can, we can rescale and we can flip things, right? So edit, transform, flip and we'll scale him down um, and you can rotate them right so you're kind of just trying to differentiate them if you're reusing the same motif you're just trying to differentiate a little bit um, perfect uh, and we can what else you can also always copy and paste motifs like this How to make sure you're on the right layer. Edit, transform, flip. Oops, I flipped it vertical. Right, so a quick control C and control V and then flipping it. Um, and making animals smaller makes them feel like they're in the background and it's a great way to fill up empty spaces that otherwise would just kind of get forgotten. Um, yeah, so this is turning into a pretty fun collection and we're just trying to kind of um, get rid of this like empty space that happens sometimes. Uh, so Make sure this is on the right layer. You should only make your motifs smaller in Photoshop. You should never make them larger or else they'll get blurry. But you can easily make things smaller. Flip. 
flip them around. Um, and yeah, we're feeling pretty good here. What if we do one more like right on the edge here to break up this space? Um, but even that might be unnecessary. So this should be a seamless pattern. If you notice the dog going off the left is coming on the right and all of that. Um, so we can easily go to edit define pattern right now and this should be seamless. So if we come over here, um, first off, let's go to edit fill and we'll just do a standard. Um, we don't want it to be a script fill uh, or a brick fill. And we just want to see, yeah, I want to see what the original one looks like first. It's hard to tell um, on this, but this is the gap on here. There's like a gap here and a gap kind of here. And maybe I should have filled in even more. Um, so now let's go to yeah, my move tool, edit fill. And we'll choose the new pattern. Yeah, so now we can't really see any of that gap. And there, this is a great way to test too, like maybe I could have used like another motif here or something. Um, but um, it's starting to look a lot better. So um, from here, I would you know, make a smaller version of it um, and make my other two colorways. Um, and we can do that pretty straightforwardly by, uh, so if this is actual size, let's make a smaller version. Um, and this is how I like my students to lay out their portfolios. And so we're gonna imitate that in Illustrator. Um, so now we're gonna make the smaller version. Um, so file, uh, or sorry, edit fill. And we do want to check off scripts because that's the way that we can change the scale of the pattern um, easily using edit fill. And um, brick fill is fine for right now. We're actually going to change the setting and kind of turn it off in a second. Um, so yeah, we don't, yeah, we want the offset between the rows to be zero, which will basically make it a straight repeat. And then um, the pattern of the scale, yeah, 0.25 or 0.5, something like that. Um, so we'll, we'll do 0.25 and we'll hit OK. Beautiful. And now we'll make our other colorways. It'll be so easy because we have just a two color print. Um, I'm going to draw my line and I'm going to try to snap it to 5.5. Yeah, because that's halfway. Um, so we're, we're drawing out a rectangle because when we use the paint bucket tool, if we, have a, if we have a selection rectangle out, then the paint bucket tool will only apply to the selection rectangle. Um, so let's grab a color. And we can click on the blue or whatever color we want to change. Um, but we have to make sure, and this is my mistake, that contiguous is unchecked. And there we go. We should be able to fill in all the blue, but um, it does seem like it's maybe better to do it in the original pattern. Um, let's just try hitting Control-Z and raising the tolerance up a little bit. Basically what's happened is that this, um, this option of using Edit Fill has added anti-aliasing to this to make it look good. Um, so really, I think the best option to do the colorways, um, despite me starting to introduce this option, um, is to change the colors over here. So we would save this as colorway one. Um, I would probably name it straight repeats to remind myself it's a straight repeat, and then colorway one. And um, then we could change merge all the layers. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And we can change the colors and define it as a pattern again. Yeah, so this got all of the blue because um, there's no anti-aliasing used on the motifs that I made. Um, and we are going to go to 
save as colorway two, I guess. Um, and save this and then go to edit to find pattern, I mean. And do a third color. Edit to find pattern. Um, and control shift save, colorway three. All right. Back over here where we're trying to do the split, let's, um, we're again, I'm going to delete my, um, my background layer, uh, or at least remove all of the color from it. So now we are going to select just half of it again. That's right. We've used the rectangle tool to select half of it. And we're going to go to edit, fill, and choose those same settings um, that we just chose with the scripts and the brick fill. Um, you don't want to accidentally change it to a brick right now, though. We need it to be the offset between the rows to be um, zero percent of the width, which means it'll basically just be a straight repeat. Um, and we can hit OK. Um, and we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So we're going to try to get it to snap to the edge of this. Exactly. 5.5. And then um, edit fill and choose our new colorway. Oops. Uh, and hit OK. And all of these settings seems to have stayed the same, um, so I should hopefully just be able to hit OK. I don't know if they're going to line up across this the same way that they do in Illustrator. Oh, they did. That's very satisfying. Um, so that's a great option there. Technically, I should have done this one in the pink. I guess I could make this one the pink. Um, we'll just do Edit Fill and we are going to just break. All right. So I've made a straight repeat for you. Um, I'm going to try to quickly make a, uh, I'm going to try to quickly make a, I actually want this to be full size. Um, so that's my mistake. We, we will shut off the script. Um, I'm going to try to make a like half drop or straight repeat that it has this like seamless effect. Um, so to do it, I'm actually just going to, um, I'll go to file new and we're going to just work with um, something that's the same size and I'm going to bring in just one motif for right now and we'll draw some other motifs in really quickly. Um, so edit, uh, sorry, over here. Okay, so with just this one motif in here, I am going to um, try to explain how to, um, how to repeat your pattern uh, in in Photoshop as a half drop or a um, or a straight repeat. Okay, but first we actually have to talk about um, straight repeats and patterns um, in general, and like how to multiply them, or like how to think about them so that you can actually turn them into straight repeats. Uh, so if we If we draw a half drop, um, I actually just want to draw one half drop that's kind of in the center. So this is going to be my half drop. We'll just make it a polka dot half drop. Um, This is it. 
then we can actually turn this half drop, sorry, into a straight repeat by kind of doubling the width. Okay, so if we draw another rectangle, and I'll choose a different color, um, that goes from here, it's the same height, but if we double the width, then this is now a straight repeat. See how this circle and this circle are pretty much the same? That is a straight repeat. So. What we have to do in order to create a seamless pattern in Photoshop is um, turn our half drops into straight repeats. That's the easiest, that's the most straightforward way. Um, and uh, it doesn't mean that you can't just take this dog and go to edit to find pattern and then make it a straight, make it a half drop or whatever um, in your. Uh, in your spare time, or sorry, just as a as a more graphic image and not as a seamless image. Um, but uh, this is how this is how we do it. And so for a um, for a straight uh, for a brick, by the way, sorry, my words are escaping me. It's getting kind of late. Um, for a brick, you just turn everything on its side, right? And then instead of doubling the width, you double the height. Um, but we are going to make a half drop because you can't actually make a half drop in Illustrator using file or using edit fill. It only lets you make a brick. Um, but the same techniques can be applied to a half drop. You just have to do it the other way. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, I'm going to delete this layer and uh, turn this motif back on. Okay, so let's draw some other um, some other really quick shapes in here. All right. If we defined this right now, it would be a pretty blocky repeat because nothing is touching the edge. Um, and uh, we want to adjust that really quickly um, and make sure that it is a seamless repeat. So we are going to grab the crop tool and we are going to change the width of the image to twice what it was. So mine was six, so I have to change it to 12. Um, I'm gonna try to snap to 12. Yeah, all right, perfect. Hit enter. Um, I can actually remove the pink from the background using the magic wand tool. And that's just there because it's my background color over here. Um, and I hit delete and it's asking me what to fill it with. Um, so I'm actually gonna hit cancel and double click on my background layer, my mistake. And we turn it into its own layer. And now when I hit delete, it'll just let it be transparent, which is what I want. All right, so we're going to copy and paste this layer now. Um, I'm going to merge them on, well, I'll just fill my background with white. That'll be straightforward enough. Um, and let's draw some of those um, square markings we drew on the last one on this tile um, really quick. So, this is just uh, for demonstration purposes. There's no need to do that in real life. And we'll merge these two together and we are going to now copy and paste that layer. Um, so I can do Command C and Command V, and we've got the whole layer. And we're just going to, we want it to be in exactly the same spot as this. Um, so we can even hold Shift and drag it to the right. Um, and technically we should move it exactly six inches to the right. So. What we could also do is go to um, 
line it up exactly, right? Let's actually even hit edit, paste special, paste in place. So now it's in exactly the same place and we can go to edit, um, transform move is what I'm thinking, but that's an illustrator option. Um, so if we, if we hold shift and move it, we can see how far we move it. We want to move it exactly six inches because in your case, it might be more. It's exactly the width of the background square. Um, okay, and now we're going to use filter other offset on just this layer, right? So filter other offsets. And remember, we know that um, this is 12 inches high, so it's 36 inches down, and we just wanna move it down. We don't wanna move it to the left or the right at all. Um, just, just straight down. So there it is, um, we can hit OK. Um, and now technically this is a half drop. If we defined this right now, edit define pattern, and we made a new file that was 11 by 17 for viewing purposes, and for printing purposes, and for your portfolio purposes. Um, and we can go to edit, fill, and let's just see what it looks like at full scale. Um, oops, that's the old pattern, edit, fill, choose the new pattern. All right, so there it is. Um, it's a half drop, and we can see that if we didn't have these shapes in here, there would be like a large gap in here. Um, and it would be pretty obvious. So what we can do now is fill in some of that to a certain extent. Um, we can fill in the center here, and then um, I think we have to filter other offset those things around, if that makes sense. Um, so let's just try um, erasing. First off, I wanna make sure my eraser is on the right setting because it wasn't last time, pencil setting. And now I can erase these guys and not worry about it adding any um, like shading accidentally. We'll still only have these three colors or however many I've used. All right, and we can draw in our new shapes. And this is just a nonsense um, drawing. So we want to make sure we're on it's our own new layer though. And we don't want to draw anything that's touching the edge. That's so important the whole time that you're doing this in Illustrator, sorry, in Photoshop. Um, so I'm just going to draw a few motifs in here and we're just focusing on the center. Um, and really I'm just, I'm just kind of futzing around. So there are those, and we need them to be up here and down here, and also on the left and the right side. Um, so let me think about how we do that really quick. Uh, I believe we need to copy and paste the file. Um, so I'll just do copy paste. You can do duplicate layer. Um, and we'll do edit paste in place paste special, paste in place, or control shift V. And now we're going to go to filter other offsets. Um, and we're just going to keep moving these around using the um, those same numbers, 900 pixels and 1800 pixels, right? Or um, 1800 pixels and 3600 pixels. So we know we want it to go all the way to the left. So that's 1800 pixels. Beautiful, and let's try doing it just zero for a second. What does that look like? Okay, so it does need to go up and down, so that's 1800. Perfect. Yeah, so these two are interacting, um, so it would be good to kind of delete one or the other. And I think that's all we needed to do. We just needed to do filter other offsets in one more time. Um, so let me delete this shape, so we don't need that. 
and it's on this layer and we'll delete the same shape on the other layer. And then all the layers should be a seamless repeat in a half drop. Um, delete, okay? And let's try it. Edit, define pattern. And come over here and then we'll go to uh, edit fill. Choose our new pattern, the most recent one here. We can hit OK. All right, there it is. And now it's all filled in with um, the artwork instead. OK, so we've learned a lot today about Photoshop and repeating patterns in Photoshop. Um, so the most important things we've learned is that when you're like initially doing the repeat, you know, don't have any of the motifs touching the sides. Also, when you're drawing motifs, don't like draw them off the edge of the paper because that can add like a sharp vertical line in your drawings. Um, you want to draw whole motifs and bring them in. And then um, you need to, you know, reduce your colors. We went over that in the last video. And um, we can use filter other offset to make seamless repeats, okay? Um, so it's definitely not as straightforward in Photoshop to do patterns. They don't have any kind of like super well built in software like in Illustrator, but it's really worth learning how to do. And it's something that I highly recommend you experiment with. Um, it's just, uh, there's like, you know, kind of some new ideas to learn and concepts to grasp while you're doing it. So let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching. Bye.